Sigma Tiger News all up in your grill with the hottest, juiciest beef online. What do we got today? Protest the tests. Trans records being shattered. Uh, no merit equals more money. I don't think so, Chicago. <laughs> Sigma Tiger all up in your grill. What's going on today? It's Monday. Boom. Irreco irrefugably shaken. Editors of Columbia Law Review demand cancellation of exams, citing trauma caused by police presence on campus. Oh my, my fragile nature cannot handle the idea that there's an authority here trying to stop criminals. Uh, editors say the violence has left them upset and unable to focus, my God. The student editors of the Columbia Law Review issued a statement on Wednesday urging Columbia Law School to cancel exams in the wake of the police operation that cleared the university's unauthorized encampment, saying the violence had let them, sorry, left them irrevocably shaken and unable to focus. The statement, which represents the majority opinion of the editorial board and was endorsed by five other law journals, including the Columbia Human Rights Law Review and the Jailhouse Lawyer's Manual, accused the police of brutalizing students, though no major injuries have been reported, and claimed that canceling exams was a proportionate response to the distress our peers have been feeling. What an absolute dog pile. Uh, the current exam policy raises concerns around equity and academic integrity, the statement said. Many are unwell at this time and cannot study or concentrate while their peers are being hauled to jail. Good lord. My god. The statement also accuses members of a white supremacist neo-fascist hate group of storming campus, an apparent reference to pro-Israel rally organized by Christian Zionists, including the evangelical musician Sean Fucht who gathered outside of Columbia's gates on April 25th for hymns and prayers. Oh my God, the violence in the music melodies. We do not think it is inconsistent with being a leading voice in legal academia and legal scholarship to prioritize students' health and safety. Columbia Law School told Washington Free Beacon had no plans to cancel exams, which it said would be administered through the conclusion of the exam period. Yeah, so cry harder, liberals. Boo-hoo! Like, all of this stuff going on in the Middle East is absolutely wrong, and we support Hamas, the terrorist organization, and October 7th, like, all the stuff they say about it isn't necessarily true, like, the rapes aren't true, but they, well, yeah, they did go into a music festival and kill and take hostages, but, you know, that's because they were occupied. That's not how it works, people. If you want to engage in war, then you announce it. We're declaring war, and then you get your militaries together and you engage. Or Russia has a special military operation, and they engaged, and then they named it so. But there's rules of engagement that you must follow globally, or else conflict will occur. And guess what? Hamas, a terrorist organization, invaded a sovereign nation and decided to kill innocent people and take hostages. And the repercussion of that is what these liberals call genocide. Well, guess what? If you hired or elected, sorry, a government and that government invaded another country and just killed people, what do you think is going to happen to you? Doesn't matter what, who the people are or whatever. They elected a government. They follow the government. They back the government. And the government are terrorists. So there it is. Have an election, a real one, and vote out Hamas and vote in a real government They'll take care of the people and not put them in harm's way by trying to invade another country that obviously is like way more powerful. This is just a really bad error in judgment. A terrible idea for Hamas to invade Israel. And this is the outcome. And now all the white people are like, boo-hoo, I don't want to write an exam. Great way to get out of it. Nice try. And for all the protesters, watch out, because Kevin O'Leary has something to say to you about all this. Uh, what makes this different from all the other previous protests we keep hearing about is that you could see everything clearly yeah. how is this gonna shape up for the futures of these 
bigots. So student protests have been with us uh, hundreds of years, and mm -hmm. there's always the passion when you're young. Uh, what's different about this time is for the first time ever, because you think about the protests in the 60s and 70s, they were shot on 60 millimeter film, mm -hmm. very, very grainy, hard to get resolution, particularly at night. Not the case now. Everything being shot now is 1080p or 4K, even the surveillance cameras. Every single image, even at night now, goes into an AI generator Ooh. and tell you who that individual is. So I hire people. <laughs> I have a lot of companies. I hire thousands of people. Within weeks, I'm going to be able on, when we're doing your background check, I'm going to find this because it's going to be in there on the dark web. Those are the services we buy. It's only $5,000 to do a deep, dark check. Mm -hmm. Here's your resume with a picture of you burning a flag. See that one? That goes in this pile <laughs> over here because I can get the same person's talent in this pile that's not burning anything. Right. I don't care what university or what you're burning or whose side you're on. You'll never know why you didn't get a mortgage. You'll never know why you didn't get into college. You'll never, in advanced education, you'll never know why you didn't get the job because we see you now. Mm -hmm. And all you need is to have your eyes exposed with a new 4K image. And for the rest of your life, you're in this pile. Boom. So all of those people that are uh, protesting and going against the authority and the narrative, well, guess what? AI is here. And they can analyze everything. And you will have a file. The NSA already has a file. Google has a file. And now they'll be adding your retinal scan to it. So watch out breaking the law, people, because it's not the way it used to be. All right. These are the best U.S. companies to work for, according to LinkedIn. All right. So uh, they measure this on ability to advance, skills growth, company stability, external opportunities, uh, company affinity, gender diversity, educational background, and employee presence in the country. So let's go ahead and have a look at this. All right, the best U.S. companies to work for, according to LinkedIn. J.P. Morgan, Chase & Company, ranked number one, financial services. Awesome. Next, Amazon. Wells Fargo, another financial services. Deloitte, professional services, typically like bankruptcy. Uh, PWC, professional services, don't know. United Health Group, healthcare. Can't imagine that being fun to work for. Uh, AT&T, telecommunications, Verizon, other telecommunications, interesting. Uh, then we have Moderna, look out. Alphabet, that would be Google's parent company. GM, General Motors, Bank of America, MasterCard, Capital One, and the Northrop Grumman, aerospace and defense. So go ahead and have a look at some of these if you're interested in getting a job and you want to be happy. Uh, one of these fields might be just for you. Boom. So let's go ahead. Let's move on. What else do we have here? Shocking moment. Transgender student drags much smaller girl out of upstate New York school bathroom by hair during a brawl with clip prompting bomb threat that closed the school. All right. The assault at Greece Arcadia High School took place in February and saw the victim dragged out of a stall by her hair by a much larger attacker described as transgender. Footage of the attack was shared by feminist website redox on thursday and resulted in a bomb threat being sent to the school forcing it to close on friday good lord uh so here is uh an image from the clip in question because they barrage the room so what exactly happened what caused this why are every all these students fighting a student grabs a screaming girl by the hair and drags her right along the floor and into the hallway a student throws several more punches before a member of staff come running over to separate them even as they're dragged away the assailant refuses to let go of the girl's hair eventually the student is escorted away and the girl who was attacked runs up behind and attempts to fight back however she is picked up and carried away by what appears to be another staff member in the wake of the footage going viral on thursday the school was sent a bomb threat and uh, yeah so let's go ahead let's see what exactly happened there because it seemed like the video was removed Boom, let's go ahead and dive right in. And there you have it, a bunch of uh, children fighting 
over who knows what. But apparently one was transgender, much bigger, and just completely manhandled uh, the other individual. So, what's going on? Well, a little more news, trans news. What do we got here happening now? Yesterday, trans athlete Sadie Schreiner won the D3 college track meet in the women's division. Uh, they won the 200 meter and 400 meter and shattered school records in the process. To make matters worse, if they had competed in the men's race, they would have placed last. Instead, they competed against women and took trophies away from them. Will this madness ever end? There's a, a image of the individual. And just uh, record-breaking times there. So let's go ahead and see exactly uh, how they did it. How well did this individual perform uh, against their peers? Not even close. Just like six body lengths ahead of the competition. And like I said, uh, if this individual decided to run in their birth category, then they would have uh, got last place. So <laughs> congratulations. Uh, you did it. You beat a whole bunch of people that were born weaker and will always be that way compared to you because you are a uh, testosterone-fueled organism. All right, Chicago Teachers Union unveils... $50 billion demands, including lower standards, $95,000 salaries, and letting schools enact trauma closures. Hypocrite leader educates their son privately. What the heck? Okay, so the teacher's union contract set to expire in June, which will soon prompt negotiations between educators and school board. Union President Stacey Davis Gates said in early March that her proposed contract for 2024 to 2028 will cost $50 billion and three cents. What an idiot. Uh, and so what Davis Gates added. That's audacity. That's Chicago. The teachers union is demanding 9% cost of living adjustments every year. According to Indeed, the average salary of a teacher in Chicago public schools is 67000 with raises every year for four years. Teachers will be getting paid around 95000 by 2028, which is roughly 36% higher than the national average. But of course, they deserve it. I mean, they're doing such a great job. Let's see how good they're doing. The $50 billion demand comes despite the fact that Chicago's public schools spends more than 21000 per student, far above the national average of 14000 per Census Bureau. And even with the extra $7,000 that Chicago lavishes on its students, the cost doesn't appear to lead to better academic results. Wait a minute. What? Only 21% of 8th grade students in Chicago's public schools were proficient at reading, as measured by the nation's report card, which has been cataloging students' academic performance across all subjects since 1969. So, literally one-fifth, not even a quarter, of the students can read. Okay, like if you were to hand someone and say, can you read this for me? They, uh, 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 b b b uh, 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 and they would struggle and they would feel like demoralized for the entire rest of their lives. So they probably just say, ah, don't worry, you don't need to read it. Eric, uh, you're the uh, Asian student, you go ahead and read it. That's perhaps partly why Davis uh, Gates has been sending her son to prestigious private Catholic school. While the 142-page contract written by the teachers union does address ways to increase the proficiency of its students in certain sections, there are also many requests that have more to do with addressing perceived social ills in the community. For instance, the teachers union wants taxpayer funds allocated to converting unused school facilities into housing for migrants. Of course. Which they dub families seeking asylum. Not only that, but they believe each migrant student should be given 2000 for help with academics, transportation, and mental health counseling. Of course, give it away to all the illegals because they worked so hard to get it. And you guys are working so hard too. So you guys should get some more. Just give it away. And why not? Because that's just Chicago. As for late arriving migrants who aren't likely to graduate high school before the age of 19, the union wants the school board to collaborate with city colleges of Chicago to create pathways. You know, just give them a degree. The contract also has many sections that cater to sex and gender issues faced by staff and students, of course. We need to take care of all that. The union is adamant that all counselors, clinicians, social workers, and psychologists are queer competent and trained annually on LGBTQ plus issues as a qualification of their job description. Run from Chicago educators, because this is indoctrination station. The union also wants to mandate that every school in the district have at least one gender-neutral bathroom. Yeah, 
Chicago has fallen so deep into the hole. Boeing Starliner rolls out to launch pad for first astronaut flight. Wait a minute. So Boeing, the company that can barely keep an airplane in the air, is going to launch astronauts into space? Totally. Uh, go ahead, check it out today. May 6th, the Starliner is at last at its Florida launch pad for its historic first mission with astronauts. Good God, we're going to pray for them. Hopefully a wheel doesn't fall off of this thing. May the rocket's force be with you. Ha 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 ha. At Atlas V rocket rolled out its launch pad on Saturday, also Star Wars Day, at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station days before its historic flight mission with astronauts top the United Launch Alliance booster with Boeing Starliner spacecraft, which will also make its debut flight with humans on board after launching no earlier than Monday, May 6th. We'll see. Launch window opens May 7th. You can watch it on the historic International Space Station mission live here at space.com. So if you want to do, check out space.com and watch the uh, astronauts sweating as they begin to lift off. And what do we hear? St. Louis Zoo begins vaccinating its at-risk animals against COVID-19. What do you mean? Why would they be doing that? Oh, okay. This is an old story. This is three years old. Why are you showing this to us? We already know that everybody in the globe has been vaccinated and it's safe and effective and it works for people. Of course, we know that. It's been told to us. And uh, YouTube has verified this with me several times. So I'm educated and I know how safe and effective this vaccine is. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. And you should go and get it. Absolutely. Of course, listen to what the authority says immediately and do comply or else. Well, they decided that uh, the animals, there was a bunch of great apes, gorillas, orangutans that were catching COVID. And they're like, oh, no, this is no good. Let's go ahead and give them the safe, effective uh, jab. It's the same one they've been giving humans. We'll just reduce it a little bit. So 29-year-old chimps receive the COVID-19 vaccine, other vaccines during regularly scheduled veterinary exam, endangered species research and veterinary hospital zoo. Jimmy Yu is recovering well in a private area of the jungle. The apes habitat, no adverse side effects are expected. Okay, read that. According to zoo veterinarians, as with all veterinarian procedures, the vaccination chimpanzees, chimpanzees will be monitored by the experienced uh, animal care technicians. Preventative health is uh, most of what we do here. Yeah, let's prevent them from getting sick. Great idea. So they they juice up all the uh, the animals and great. Um, so what happened? Unfortunate, same zoo. Um, we had a passing this Saturday. Uh, little Joe dies from a heart attack. Interesting. Um, endangered lowland gorilla named the nicknamed the professor for his high intelligence died Saturday at the St. Louis Zoo to a heart attack. The zoo announced on social media early Sunday that Little Joe, who had been in treatment for heart disease, had died. It is with incredible sadness we share that western lowland gorilla Little Joe, who had been in treatment for heart disease, died of a heart attack overnight May 4th. Joe's wonderful personality and lovable grumpy face endeared him to all who knew him. He'll be greatly missed. It's incredible sadness that uh, little Joe has been hurt. Yeah, so keep repeating it. Why not? Because we got to get those number of words in for the editor so he can run this story. He had a red head set apart him from other gorillas at the zoo. He enjoyed spending time with his best friend, John Tu, and also enjoyed watching visitors pass by. The zoo said in previous social media posts, the zoo also described him as one of the smartest in the group of gorillas who loved to train with his keepers and was a full personality. So unfortunately there you see uh, the gorilla passed away. Uh, what else do we got here? Bird flu, little update. Counties where avian flu has been detected in the wild mammals since 2022. So uh, here are all the green areas. You can see Jefferson County all the way over to uh, Hyde County, North Carolina. Even all the way down to Dixie County, Florida, all over the gaff. So it says here, uh, 221 cases, 85 were found in red foxes. Uh, a dolphin, we covered that story, the bottlenose bird flu. And it was uh, even up here in Alaska, good Lord, in polar bears. And so what's going on? Is it in humans? Well, they only got two cases. Just two, CDC confirmed. But in our story on Friday, you'll realize that uh, they have no authority to just go and test people. There's no mandate for it. They'll go up and say, excuse me, farmers, uh, we understand bird flu is going around. Can we test you? And they say, no, beat it. So no one's getting tested. Uh, so we don't really know. But the theory is that hundreds of humans have had this and contracted it. And there's no real problem thus so far. 
So up to 7.5% of new and emerging infectious diseases in people come from animals, and most of those can be traced back to wildlife. Monitoring wild animals for diseases can help scientists identify emerging health threats. Because we can't monitor humans, because there's body, bodily autonomy. You can't just go out to people and force them unless there's an emergency uh, declaration. Government agencies U.S. and around the world monitor wild birds for avian influenza which spreads in bird populations without causing symptoms and select animals for other pathogens but on the whole there is very little surveillance of wildlife for any diseases outbreaks of avian flu and farm poultry and wild birds started to increase around the world in 2020 and it started killing mammals seals from chile to russia to maine red foxes in europe and the u.s sea lions in peru and other species bird flu is affecting nearly 20 wild mammal species humans are mammals what is a mammal well warm-blooded drinks milk as a child, hair or fur at some point in the life of a vertebrate breathes oxygen through lungs. Cows are being infected. Watch out, people. And we also covered that uh, a bunch of people are scooping up this vaccine. They are working on it. Uh, so heads up. This could be coming to a farm near you. Sigma Tiger, all up in your grill. Like and subscribe. Let's get this mask off. Let's see what I really look like. Looking forward to it. Sigma Tiger, signing out.